when I interview people that are experts on something that I'm not an expert on, it gives me an opportunity to get new listeners. And then also I get exposed to their audience. And then I like to interview other business coaches. And I learn a lot from these other business coaches that have helped like massive startups. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. Hey, podcaster. This episode is going to be a little bit different because usually, you know how we do every even or every odd number is either solo or an interview. For the next couple of episodes, probably like four of them, I'm going to actually push out interview episodes during solo episode days only because we have so many extra interview episodes that are going all the way past the end of the year. And so I want to bring you that great content and I'll take a break from the solos just for a few weeks and we'll jump right back in. So this interview, although it's supposed to be a solo episode, it's going to be an interview episode. So let's dive in and you can get the value that this guest has. Hey, what's up, podcaster? It's your host, Adam Adams, and we've got Robert Lyon on the show today. And on our show, I was just on his. So what you could do is we'll go ahead and put the link to his podcast in the show notes. It's called The Lion Show. And just go ahead and click on that. You can check it out. Give him a rating review. Listen to my episode with him or whatever you want to do. His company is called Escape Velocity Community. What he does is helps people start businesses, scale businesses, launch businesses. And I think what we're going to talk a little bit about is what of those things today, what things that he's naturally really good at and helps other people with can help you also, but with your podcast. So let's dive in. Uh, Robert, your bio is already in the show notes. So the listener can just scroll down and grab that. So I'll go ahead and skip that part. But I wanted to find out like, how long ago did you start your podcast and kind of what sparked you knowing that you needed to have a show? Uh, yeah, so I think I think about three years in on creating podcasts. I think the Lion Show is actually only about two years in, but I really had a you know just kind of a moment in my life where I kind of hit rock bottom, right? And I just didn't know what to do anymore, and I had to just kind of make a new plan. Things were working, so I started reading a book a day. So once I started reading a book a day and really just investing in myself and my personal development, after a, quite a few days of reading a book, you know. I kind of run out of people that want to hear me talk about a bunch of crazy stuff. And I was like, man, I've always been making music. I've always had the recording stuff. I was like, I should just kind of start a podcast. And I really had to think about it for a little while. I was like, well, what are people going to want to listen to me? I was kind of you know, younger back then, I guess. And I was like, well, I'm studying creativity right now and I'm learning some amazing stuff. So I really just want to st- like create something that I can share with people that will add value. So I started a podcast. It's just called like Robert R. Lyon. It's really old and kind of crappy. You don't want to hear that one. But I just started sharing what I was learning while I was studying creativity. You know, I was reading Leonardo da Vinci, Steve Jobs, Einstein, like all their books and just kind of studying how they would think about creative things. And I was recording it you know, like walks with my dog and recording and stuff like that. And then I kind of got into it. I was like, man, this is cool. I'm going to keep recording. I changed the branding to The Lion Show and I just kind of took off and I decided, you know, this is really important. I really like what I'm doing. And then I started interviewing people. And when I started interviewing people, I was like, oh man, I get to talk to smart people. I get to hear about their stories. We get to share lives And then I figured out how to share my podcast more. You know, we talked about it on my show. I learned how to do a podcast SEO. And then I would start ranking for certain keywords. And I was like, oh man, people are actually listening to what I'm saying. And we're really kind of growing this thing. And then I turned it into a community. And then now it's really become like a big part of my business. So it really kind of started as like fun, a way to express myself and a way to just reach out to more people, talk to more people all over the world. And yeah, it's just kind of, what I do now. I love recording. I love podcasting and just kind of sharing my message. And now I'm teaching people how to start their own businesses, how to be an entrepreneur, how to think differently, not only like think creatively, but how to create your own life, you know, how to be successful. That's kind of the key things that I focus on. And I was talking to somebody yesterday on my podcast and he's like, you know, a lot of people talk about having a podcast. They never actually do it. (laughs) And then if you keep it going and you have a positive message, as opposed to just 
talking about all the garbage and all the stuff that's going on in society, people really need to hear that kind of stuff because it could change someone's life out there. And whenever I hear things like that, I just get real motivated to just keep going. And now we're crushing it. You know, I got the little system going on and you know, I just love doing it. <laughs> that's really interesting. So you started your podcast for fun and then you kind of grew it into something where you're getting personal growth and sharing. And then you kind of grew that into let's make this be part of the business. So now it's a big part of your company as well. Yeah. I mean, you never, like I call them like ghost listeners. There's just so many people that listen to my show or have listened to a couple episodes and then they catch back up because I keep putting out new content and they may not interact with me anywhere, but then whenever I make an offer, I'll do sales calls and people will be like, oh yeah, I love your show. I was listening to it the other day and you know, I just kind of want some help with this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like This that's is cool. crazy. <laughs> so before we go any further, if the listener is hearing you say that you've got these ghost listeners that end up reaching out and they're wondering, well, nobody's reached out to me yet. Like I don't have any sales calls for my podcast. Is there a call to action or a strategy that you're implementing that's helping to make sure that they're booking these sales calls with you? Yeah, it's a couple different things. I would create a free community or I would create a free lead magnet. So you either go to the free community route where you put them into a Facebook group or you put them into a Discord or something along those lines. And then a bunch of people will be in there and just got to make good offers. You know, like my show is not necessarily the most niche down, like we're just going to talk about business. It's kind of like a broad thing. So I have certain people that come from different walks of lives and they want to make more money or they want help with something that has to do with their business because that's what I'm good at and they hear me talk about it. So, but if like you figured out, if you niche down and you make a great offer on every single episode and you keep it simple, that's the easiest way to start generating sales calls. But the other way is that people will just start to like you more. You pull them into your community. So you either get them in a small community or an email. And then you just do like a drip campaign, just, hey, you know, I'm making this offer. Would you like help with this? And you just be of service. You know, a lot of people nowadays, they're all about like, I don't know, like just making, charging too much money or making outrageous claims and things like that to get people's attention. But if you just say, I'm going to aggressively try and serve my community, they'll start to come out of the woodwork because people need help. You know what I mean? People like stuff, but they have to trust you because there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, just the shenanigans in the marketplace right now. So that's why podcasting is so powerful because if they hear you talk every day, it's a pretty easy sell, to be honest with you. <laughs> like that's a lot of the times, some of the easiest sells are people will be like, yeah, I just like binged your whole podcast. I know a lot about you. Like, <laughs> I would love to work with you. Can you help me with this, this or this? And then, you know, it's just kind of figuring out how we're going to make it happen. So it's the best way, again, free community, get them in the email, get them to know, like, and trust you, make them a clear, simple offer. That's not too intimidating. Sometimes people don't want to work with like the really big people because they kind of seem like they're bigger than life and they don't actually think they'll get any value or they'll actually be able to help them. So you just kind of meet them where they are, I guess. I like that. Meet them where they are. How did you do a book a day? Exactly. It It was was like, (laughs) I've tried just doing audible and I'll probably even listen on double speed. Just fine. You know, maybe two and a half times, Uh but it still probably takes me a couple of days, even like yeah. when I'm really forcing it, it probably <laughs> know, still still. takes me a couple of days. Yeah. I mean, I still listen to like an audio book probably every couple of days, just because like I do a lot of to listen while I'm in the gym. I listen while I'm in the car. I make uh, sculptures and furniture and art and things like that. And when I'm doing that, I just listen to audio books. And I mean, like I said, I was at rock bottom. I had, <laughs> I had nothing better to do. than <laughs> just start learning and start reading a book a day. But I started I really remember reading like Steve Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. And like my whole world was just rock. It was just like brain explosions. And then I read, you know, Andrew Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I was like, oh my God, like there's some knowledge to be learned out there. I was, I had lots of nothing else to do back then. And it was just kind of a, it's one of those situations where like, I just need to really get into it. And it wasn't like a book a day. Like I'm dyslexic. Like it took me a long time to read, but I had to do something to improve my life. And there's a library, you know, it was free. It wasn't anything crazy. And I just had to get there. And then from there though, I just became an advocate of learning. Like I have to learn something consistently and becoming that person has changed the way that I see the world has changed the way that I act and I interact with the world. And I just can see like from that moment, my life changed. I was like going downhill. And then from that moment, I can see the projection that things started to get better. Things started to 
you know, appear cool. more. Yeah. So that's why. That happened to me as well. And one of the books that I read challenged me to practice gratitude, kind of like a meditation or a prayer, but really you just consciously thinking about the things that you're grateful for. And even when you're having a bad day or you feel too tired, hungover, you didn't sleep well, you were up all night with kids throwing up or whatever, it was always still beneficial and remarkably beneficial to just think about that gratitude. And I would say that each and every book that I've read, I've learned a little bit. So you brought up a couple books, by the way. One of them was Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And the other one was How to Win Friends and Influence People. And we'll put both books in our show notes today in case somebody wants to check those out. I'm curious before I go to this question, I want to ask you a little bit about how you switched your podcast to where you're finally interviewing people. We'll Mm -hmm. get right to that, but I just want to stay on this subject of the books just for a second. Cool. So I just wanted to find out what your favorite habit was from that book. Like, I know I stick on one all the time and I use it in this podcast practically Mm -hmm. every episode. So I'm really curious, like what's the habit that really sticks out the most to you out of all seven? Out of all seven? Well, when I had the paradigm shift, that was like, well, there's so many in that book. Like they're all great. Like if I had to say one that I need to work on more, it would be sharpening the saw, you know, take time to, to refresh yourself, rechange your life. But having a paradigm shift and being able to see things from different angles and from other people's perspective. And, you know, just like he just goes into such crazy stuff where you can put yourself in a corner and you can view yourself doing things. I don't know. That broke my brain. I was like, Oh my God, like there's so many different things to life that I just don't know yet. And I had to learn more about Mm. it, but those would be the two. And yeah, just trying to see things from other people's perspectives. What's the one that you use? Uh, Begin with the end in mind. Yeah, it's for podcasting. I feel like there's a lot of people that start a show and they've heard like ready, fire, aim, don't overthink it. They've heard just start. You can always redo it. They've heard done is better than perfect. And so I'm constantly sharing that I think it's much more important, especially with a podcast and probably even a business that you should actually have that plan in place. So. Yeah, as I grow more and I learn more about everything, that's so key. And then even just interviewing people, they're like, oh, if I don't do this, like I'm going to regret it. And it's like, oh, at the end of your life, what are the things that you want to have done yeah. before it's over? So it's important for sure. So back to the interviews. Yeah. I picked up on something you were talking about how you know you started your podcast, the first podcast like three years ago, and then you kind of refreshed and started this one a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. And you were mostly doing solo episodes, but for some reason decided to do interviews. So I guess what the listener might have been thinking and what I was wondering, and I thought you might be able to have the insight on it, is really like what made you switch to adding interviews Mm -hmm. and also what has it done differently for you or the podcast or your business? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of what made me switch. <laughs> Honestly, I think it was just like, you know, watching Joe Rogan or like watching some of these other big podcasts and being like, I want to talk to cool people. <laughs> okay, cool. And then cool. Uh, just blowing up Facebook and, you know, really kind of just going down the rabbit hole of like, how do I get actually interesting people? Because I just did a ton of interviews. Like we, when I first started doing interviews, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then I started doing like three or four a day. And it was just like, okay, this is exhausting. Like, What am I doing? <laughs> and then I had to figure out how to get real good guests on the show or better guests. It was cool interviewing you know, random people from all over the world. You know, like I talked to people in India, I talked to some people in Canada and they weren't necessarily in alignment, but it was still interesting to talk to them. And what it did for me though, you know, it's a lot of work to do interviews and people don't know that if you've never started a podcast, it's a lot of work to edit and do all the things. And then you're promoting somebody else. And it's just like, well, what am I doing? But then I had a couple, you know, key interviews that I personally learned so much. And I connected with just completely amazing, amazing people. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm probably doing something right. If after I have an interview and I talk to someone for an hour, I've learned something, I feel like my entire world has been rocked. Like, okay, something good, something important is happening right now. And then I get to share that with my audience as well and grow and just try and blow that up. Yeah. It was mostly just kind of experimenting. I like talking to people, you know, so that's kind of something I'm good at, but it kind of evolved to now I like to keep myself on my toes and interview really amazing people, 
keep it going. And then I'll do breaks where I stop interviewing people and I just make my own podcasts, you know, where I just do something that I'm studying and I want to share with people. Or lately, it's really just been a ton of just different business tactics that I've been learning. And I just like, I actually learn from explaining it to other people as well. So that's kind of a key thing for me. It's like, if I write it down, if I read it, write it down, and then I actually make an episode where I have to like show that I actually learned something, I learn it better. I can redo yeah. it and then I can get deeper with it. So that's kind of not quite the exact answer, but I like interviewing. You know, At the end of the day, it's fun to connect with people. It's fun to learn. And I'm really good at like guerrilla marketing. So when people come on my show, I will share that episode with the whole freaking internet. You know what I mean? They will know there's a new episode at that point. So then people get a lot for coming on my show. And then I kind of have fun at just getting people to finding new ways to get listeners to listen to the podcast that I might not have made an episode about, but I interviewed somebody who's an expert on it. So let's take two of those things that you mentioned, getting better guests yeah, and guerrilla marketing. Mm -hmm. And let's dissect each of those as well. But can you share if like doing these interviews, has it helped your business at all? Like, honestly? Yeah. So there's quite a few people that actually go on podcasts and then they pitch the host afterwards. I'm sure you've been pitched a ton. <laughs> and it's secretly kind of a good way because they're in alignment. You just talk to them for an hour. So if you go on shows, I've actually found a couple clients that are like, oh, I'd love for you to help me with my business and things like that after the show. So that's always kind of cool. But I think that you asked, has interviewing people helped my business? Is that what you said? Yeah. Maybe even just like the exposure or something. Have you seen a noticeable change because you're making interviews instead of just solos? Mm, like I said, I've when I interview people that are experts on something that I'm not an expert on, it gives me an opportunity to get new listeners to okay. talk about something that I don't know about, yeah. which is cool. And then also... You know, I get exposed to their audience, which is also a great bonus. And then I like to interview other business coaches, right? So I'm a business coach and I learn a lot from these other business coaches that have helped like massive startups and done all these other things. So I'll take little nuggets from there and I'll be able to implement that in my coaching. So yeah, it's definitely, it's cool. helped my business in quite a few ways. Awesome. Let's talk about getting better guests. So one of the things that you mentioned is you started doing tons of interviews. Yeah. And you just went all in. And I love that about you, by the way. You're an all in or all out type of person. Yeah. And so once you started doing guests, you went full force. You didn't half ass it, you full assed it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you tried to figure out how to get more interesting guests, better guests, more popular guests. And I know that our listener, who's also a podcaster, probably wants to know like, what is he doing? Is there a trick in that? process mm -hmm. that can help me to get better gas. So can you kind of spill the beans on that? Yeah. I mean, it just comes down to research, you know, and like, here's a quick tip for anybody who wants to start a podcast and make money right away is you can actually charge money to interview people. Like that's a great way to monetize your podcast is like, be like, Hey, come on for 400 bucks or hundred bucks or 500 bucks, thousands of dollars, whatever it is. And I'll interview you and I'll do all the work. That's the first way that someone could make money in you know, making monetize their podcast. Right. But I found that if I just do research or if I have a specific topic, I, I say that when I go and like, cause sometimes I find people in Facebook groups that want to do interviews or people that I admire. And I really like pre-planning who I'm going to interview or trying to make a campaign of going after people that I look up to and just asking, being like, Hey, can I interview you on my show? I look up to you. You know, some people will just ghost you, but a lot of the times they'll say yes. It just is really cool. That's like the number one way is like find people that you know you follow on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, and you're just like, man, this person is cool. They know something, and then just reach out to them and just kind of keep bugging them. And then when you have like Calendly or you know WhatsApp or whatever, where people schedule with you, ask a couple questions, you know, and be like, you know, what are we going to talk about? What are you an expert in? I need a bio and a headshot. And then you just kind of Google them. And I've honestly deleted people just from my calendar and been like, I'm not, I'm not going to interview you. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. We're not in alignment. I think you're kind of not going to be the best fit for my show. And it's just kind of, it is what it is. But like I said, I did you know, probably 20, 30 interviews without it filtering anybody. And I was like, sometimes it would just be like, that was a big waste of my time. I hate yeah. wasting my time <laughs> you know, and I don't want to do that. So I made more questions in my 
little form that people answer. And then I used to have a link to the public where anybody could kind of maybe book a show. Now I charge money to the public. And then I specifically go out and I pick and I cherry pick people that I really want to interview. And then also there's some cool apps. I think that's where we might have connected. It's like Podmatch or whatever. And you can read people's bios and decide if they're a good fit or not. So I think that yeah. kind of answers your question. So that's how I would do it. Yeah. So you charge money for people to come on your show. And that, I thought that's interesting because there's a lot of people that come to me uh-huh. and they'll want to be able to monetize their show. Like they're just clients of ours and they're deciding now, hey, I want this to put money in my pocket instead of take money out of my pocket. And I did an episode, the listener should probably check it out and I'll instruct the team to put that in the show notes. But I did an episode, one of my first episodes, I don't remember the number right now off the mm-hmm. top of my head, but it's probably within the first 30 episodes that I had on the podcast. And there's hundreds now. On that episode, I put there's more than one way to monetize. And I think I named like seven ways to monetize a show. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, I didn't ever think about charging guests to come on the show. So the listener might be thinking to themselves, man, that's awesome. How do I do that? How many listeners do I have to have before I'm allowed to ask for that? How much money am I allowed to ask for? Is there a certain way that Robert's phrasing it that is going to allow me to actually make money from some of these guests? So do you mind just giving us a bit more info on how do you charge money to get people on the show? Yeah, I do it just the real lazy way. Like I said, I have a link on my website. So this is going to go down a rabbit hole, but each episode... I have like a keyword or something that I try and rank for on Google, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, whatever. And it's all on my website. Um, and I'm actually going to update the website, thelionshow.com. But I just have a little thing in the corner that just says, be a guest on the show. And if you want to be a guest through that link, it charges them money. It charges... I've done like 500 bucks. I've done 100 bucks. I just do 100 bucks right now. And it just... you know, 100 bucks an episode helps pay for my time to edit it, helps pay for my staff, helps me make sure that I actually do a good job of everything. Do you say that in the scripting or the copy of when people... In order to book a show, you got to pay. No, dude. What I'm asking is the people who are going there to pay, do they see that the hundred, what it's going toward is for you to edit and stuff like that? Is that part of the website? Yeah, it's just one of the questions. Okay. But it's just like be a guest on the show is just the button. There's nothing okay. else on it. Then you click it and it just says, you know, pay this much to book a time. And that's kind of how it works. And then like I said, I have I interview other people that I want to interview. I don't charge them. But that's just one okay. way to monetize. And but you can charge. Some people charge thousands and thousands of dollars to go on people's show. And I don't even know if they have any listeners, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it just depends on what you want to do. And then yeah. But if you position yourself, because this is a big thing for business, is it's positioning. If you position your podcast as an expert in a certain field, or if you want to talk to, or if you want to reach an audience that somebody else has already facilitated, you should charge money for it. You know, it's a valuable yeah. thing that you're doing. So cool. And yeah, it's a great way to monetize your podcast. I ended up getting on John Lee Dumas's podcast. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. Oh, yeah. And I ended up they charge every single guest. I mean, maybe he does reach out to people and maybe he even pays people mm-hmm. uh, to be guests. But for me, I had to pay and it was thousands of dollars. So yeah. kind of interesting that you brought that up. That episode came out a while back. It was all about marketing. We can link that into the show notes today as well. So I'll have my team just put that episode in that I was on JLD. But um, charge guests money, guerrilla marketing. You share in a guerrilla style. I do. So how come you do that? I got like three follow-up questions about this guerrilla marketing. Like why? And the next one is like, doesn't it like actually hurt your Facebook audience if you're telling them every single week you're throwing it, throwing these episodes in front of them? Isn't that scary or counterintuitive? Let's hear what you say about sharing your guerrilla marketing. Well, when I do my solo podcasts, you know, I'm all in because I made it myself. I'm fancy. You know, I talk, <laughs> I talked to myself. I needed some expert advice. I'm going to share the crap out of those. And then when I do an episode where I interview somebody else and they're an expert in something, I won't just like blast my Facebook group or I'll find other Facebook groups that have already cultivated audience members 
and I'll blow them up. So what's cool right now is there's unlimited traffic on the internet, right? You just have to not be lazy. So I start by doing pretty good copywriting and I sell the show. You know, I got to, what's the key thing that they're going to get and how can I write a little blurb that's actually going to get someone to click. And then you want to make like a good thumbnail and all that, yada, yada. But Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups are pretty cool. Reddit, Discords, you know, Quora, just like there's already groups of these people that might benefit from listening to your show. So then I think of it as like my duty to share it and make sure that they know like, hey, there's this episode out there. This is going to help you with something in your life. You're going to learn something. Uh, You might become a fan, so on and so forth. And then I basically also chop up all the episodes into little clips, link it back to The Lion Show. The Lion Show also ranks on Google and things like that. And that's kind of how I do it. So I'm not necessarily... And even if I am spamming my Facebook audience, like it's Facebook. Like that's what you do there. Like <laughs> I don't know. Like social media, you can be worried. Like if you just have one with your friends, then make another one where you just share your podcast. You know what I mean? And then you just add 5,000 people to it. You filter out all the spam people and you just kind of keep building and, and keep connecting. And eventually people are just going to be like, yeah, he has a show. He talks about it. That's cool. I'm not like forcing people to listen to it. I can't force anyone to listen to my show. All I can do is write some copy, make a good looking thumbnail, and then make sure that people that might be interested in this know that I have a new episode on this and I share it with as many things as I can. So when you said you start another profile, it's another personal profile. And then when you said you add 5,000 people, that means with your second personal profile, Mm -hmm. basically with your name, you go out and try to friend... 5,000 of your perfect people and yeah. you just decide that you'll share the podcast on one and not the podcast on the other? Yeah. I'm a real, I'm a tactics guy, which is, you know, it's interesting, but I get nerdy with this stuff. So I have multiple profiles, to be honest with you, because I used to do this for real estate. I used to have a bunch of different profiles where I would try and find people that wanted to sell their house so I could get a good deal. And then I kind of stopped doing that. And now I kind of use it for my podcast. But I do have two accounts, you know, and one of them is mostly just for business and podcast stuff. And then I have another one that's kind of old that I don't even use anymore. I use the other one more frequently, but you can only share in so many groups and you can only add so many people before the Facebook algorithm will kind of be like, oh, he's a spammer, you know, let's stop him. So you got to kind of have some tact with it. You don't want to just like, you want to build it up, is all I'm saying. You want to ease into it. If you add 5,000 people on one, new account, you're going to get kicked off Facebook. So you got to kind of add like 100 people a day, find new Facebook groups, keep joining Facebook groups. You can only share in about like 13 Facebook groups per day on one account before you get marked as spam. So have some tact and you don't have to just go completely nuts like I have, but this is what I like to do to grow shows. Like I said, it's guerrilla marketing. This isn't you know business suit marketing. This is like, I'm going to blast Facebook and I'm going to make sure people know that I have this episode out. But If you have a couple of Facebook profiles and you're sharing in all these groups, you're going to get some traction. Now, there is a lag to it where if you spend all day sharing in all these different Facebook groups, like you're not going to get as far. It's not going to show up as much as you want it to. But if you do have some Facebook groups that are active, that are in the same niche as your podcast and as your episodes, and it's in alignment with them, that's what you want to go for. You don't want to just like spam everything. If it's a personal development episode, Find some really active personal development groups that you can share in. That's another thing. Not all groups let you share stuff in them. So find those groups. Make sure that you're engaging in those groups kind of frequently. And then also mention that you have this episode. And then, like I said, there's other forums. Though. There's LinkedIn. There's podcasting forums. There's Reddit. There's Twitter. You know, There's all kinds of different areas where your audience might be. It's about finding people that would be in alignment with the episode and then just having good copy that says what it's about and then sharing it with them basically. Wow. Good, good stuff. I've got a few more questions for you that really lie in your expertise of business coaching. And I want to see like how that can help us if we're podcasting or starting another business, but we have a quick, quick break for the sponsor and be right back. Hey, my friend, as you know, this episode is sponsored by my company, growyourshow.com. We want you to be able to have the best tools at your disposal without costing you a whole arm and a leg. So right now you can get a free list of vetted equipment that like mics, mixers, webcams, sound treatment, editing software, everything that you need. I created the whole PDF with direct purchase links. 
just to save you time and money to help it be more convenient for you. So this free PDF will help you skip all the guesswork. If it's on there, it's vetted and approved by yours truly. And if it's not on there, it's probably not worth the money. So go ahead and get yours at growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. Let's get back into the show. All right. We are back with Robert Lyon. And Robert, first question I'm curious about is if someone's listening, they haven't yet started their business and you want to pour into them so that they know some things that they got to know, what do they need to know about starting their own company right now? So my newest thing is not actually my newest thing, but instead of thinking about what business or like what's the big idea, it's like we talked about before the Steve Covey thing. It's like have a plan at the end, make it super simple, have it mapped out. But it's also what business model is going to fit your life. And that's kind of the hardest part about teaching new people how to start businesses is they're all like, oh, we got all these ideas and all this stuff. And just like starting a podcast, like not all of them are actually going to even do anything. So the key thing is the best business for you to start is the one that you're actually going to commit to, the one that you're actually going to do the work. And then I like to go from there to what kind of business model do you want to have? You know, Do you want to do services and then leverage other people's time to do it? Do you want to write blogs? Do you want to have strictly just an all content creation business? Do you want to do affiliate marketing? Do you want to make courses? Do you want to do coaching? You know, you have to pick what model really suits you or e-commerce is another one that a lot of people really like. And then once you figure out what business model and then what business, like what the engines that you're actually going to do the work are, then we can kind of move forward. So have the end in mind, understand your personality, what kind of lifestyle you actually want to live and then working towards that relentlessly so that we can actually get massive success and make sure that you are creating a profitable business. Because I don't want to just help people create BS businesses. I want to create a profitable business with you. So That's very interesting. I like the begin with the end in mind. This gentleman that I've been working with and I pay to be in a mastermind group with him, one of the big things about their mastermind is they talk about helping make sure that we have a business vision and a life vision, first and foremost. And that's beginning with the end in mind. That's exactly what we're talking about. And this, if I ask you, what is the number one the thing that the person listening needs to understand? You're basically saying, understand what type of business, how it's going to fit in your life, how you want your life to be, how you want your business to be, what type of service or product you're going to be selling, affiliates, and then you make it come to fruition. And I will say that working in that mastermind, I rejected that for a long time. So I love that you brought this up. I rejected it because, and I hope that the listener can resonate with this in some way. I was thinking to myself, I'm too gosh dang busy to even think about what I want my vision to be. And I was like, I'm too weeded. I'm too behind the eight ball. I'm too working 120 hours a week sometimes, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 hours in one week. And they kept saying, you've got to get your vision clear. You've got to draw out what you want this to look like. And I'm like, I'm too crazy busy to even think like that. And when I finally made the switch and I said, I want to work, at the time I said, I want to work less than 25 hours a week. And that seemed insane to go from 100 to just 20. Right. And I started just trying to work on it. And we got it down to where it's five to 15 hours now each week. And I think that never happened until I did what you said. And that was kind of figure out what type of service, how I wanted to be part of it what I wanted it to look like. And so that I resonate with it a lot because I've seen it in my own business, life-changing. I also wanted to ask you, like your services, you business coach, you help people start businesses. And I just feel like in my mind, there's a lot of things that can translate from starting a podcast or starting a business or starting a not-for-profit that kind of overlap. So could you share a couple of the 
big tips that you teach clients that would also help us today with our podcast? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I like to teach people how to make like a six figure podcast. Like it's not the hardest thing in the world. It's basically like we said, start with the end in mind and then you just got to make episodes and make episodes. But then the way that I monetize like to teach people is you're going to not just create like an audio podcast. You're going to create a video podcast and then you're going to basically become a content creator. That's the thing. And I like to make six, seven figure content creators by you create amazing content to a free resource to what I call an email super system, where in the email super system, you're either selling services, affiliate products, or courses or coaching. And if you do this right, you can make endless amounts of money as long as you are consistently creating content that is in alignment with your customer, you're making them an offer, and then you are taking them to a community or an email list. And in that email, you can automate. Like What I like to do is I'll send kind of like a... Obviously, I send them updates on all the new episodes that they stay in the loop. But then I have an automated like one month to two month campaign that just kind of we get connected. They know what I'm offering you know, in a non-sleazy way. I just say, this is how I can help you if you're interested. And then if they don't take me up on that, then they go into another campaign where I sell them you know, affiliate tools or other offers that maybe they would be interested in so that I'm always making money. And I help people do this so that you can start your podcast, start your content creating business and really start to scale. Because every time you get a new subscriber, you find out you know, the lifetime value of that person could be 30 bucks, could be you know, 3,000 bucks, could be 30,000 bucks, whatever you're selling. And you basically just get them in there. You offer them something for free. You know, I'm not like, it's kind of a bribe, but I'm genuinely helping them for free first. And then I'm telling them, making them an offer. And if they don't like my offer, then I'm going to give them an opportunity to maybe buy an affiliate product or something else. But it's just all about building a community. People like spending money. You know, people like finding people to learn and grow from. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I recommend that if you're going to start a podcast, think with the end in mind, get a good email system, get a free community and offer way more value for free than make an offer on the back end where you actually make some money and stuff like that. Super interesting. I like the way that you described the six-figure podcast. And I think when we heard you say six-figure podcast, Probably a few of us were like, well, I can't even imagine three figures yeah. <laughs> on my podcast. Like, how is this possible? I want a six figure podcast. And many people listening probably might not have even seen six figures mm-hmm. in their life in a year. And you just sharing that it can happen through the podcast and giving all of those tips about how it's done with offers and lead magnets and follow ups and staying in front of them and maybe even having a community a drip campaign, and just making the offer. This is how I can help you in a non-sleazy way. Good stuff. The third question and final question. If you're just thinking to yourself, we've had a lot of content on this episode today. We've shared a lot of cool things with the listener, another podcaster today. What do you feel absolutely compelled to share with them right now? You know, just like if you're stuck, if you need help, there's always an answer to help get you to that next level. A lot of people, they park in life. It's like, I hate to use a video game metaphor, but when you play video games, you can level up. You consistently level up. You get more experience, you get better, and you break through to the next level. A lot of people, they level up a level up and then they just stop and they decide, I can't go any higher. I don't know what to do. Whereas if you just keep working on your skills, you keep moving yourself forward and you keep learning and you keep bettering yourself, you will get to the next level. It might just be a little bit harder than the levels before it. Uh, that's a good way to end the episode. You don't even have to go anywhere. Just check out the next episode. See you there. You're not alone if you're ready to either get your very first affordable microphone or if you're ready to upgrade your equipment to some legit podcasting studio equipment. Because on all of the forums over the last few months, I'm seeing this all the time. Even my own personal clients that work with my team, they're ready to get that next microphone. They're asking us for it. Additionally, when I'm on discovery calls with potential clients, they're always asking for this stuff. Hey, what mic do you recommend? Hey, what lighting do you recommend? What webcam should I be using? So many questions. And so what we did, my whole team has put together a PDF so that 
If you're one of those people who is looking to either get your very first affordable microphone or if you're ready to upgrade your equipment to more professional podcast studio equipment, whether it's soundproofing or whatever, we've got you covered by going to growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. And you can download the PDF for free or right there on the webpage is everything that you would have and you don't need to download the PDF. Either way, just go to growyourshow.com forward slash PDF, which will put you to the podcasting equipment that me and my team have personally vetted. I'll see you on the next episode.